going back and forth like an echo, 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 echo. The way that I perform, the way that I sing, has a lot to do with my musical influences over the years, which has been through Amal. Whenever he's out, Kanchan Arman is ready. <laughs> core of a singing reality show should be music my only hope and wish is that the show should be more about music and less about the other things so first of all welcome to e times and congratulations for echo personally i love the song so you tell me this is your i'm sure many upcoming international collaborations this is your first international collaboration how are you feeling with the kind of immense response that you've been receiving on it it's been amazing uh, for me so far uh, the kind of response that the fans have given uh, the kind of response we're getting for the song and the video um, you know given given the times we've been able to put together a song and a video for all the fans which was a big task for all the teams uh, across la korea and mumbai uh, but we made it happen and uh, the response is phenomenal uh, people are loving this um, you know crossover kind of a collaboration um indian artist korean artist um uh, you know indian american dj and all of us have come together on one track and uh, i think the words are somewhere relatable to what's happening with us to us at this point uh, so i think yeah, it's it's struck a chord with uh, a lot of the listeners and i'm just glad that people are loving the new music that i'm putting out what kind of challenges like as you mentioned you know it was a challenge to put together a song saying being at different corners of the world uh what kind of challenges did you guys come across you know when actually sitting down and putting together the whole song because you've mentioned it took almost 8 months to you know finally put out the song yeah it definitely is challenging you know because one artist is uh, in india one artist is in korea and the other is in uh, you know los angeles um we all recorded our parts from wherever we were and a lot of the coordination happened over email and over uh you know zoom conversations and it was uh, a lot of back and forth just like how the song suggests back and forth uh, like an echo uh so yeah there was a lot of exchange over emails and uh, we had to uh you know uh, keep in mind uh, the time differences between the three uh you know uh, countries cities and uh it wasn't that tough to get the music done what was actually tough was getting all three artists to kind of coordinate their timings together in terms of like getting uh the video sorted uh getting uh you know for us to be together on uh you know just getting us live together or yeah. it's it's just coordinating those things has been uh you know Uh, really tough for our, our teams but they uh, i just want to take this moment and uh, you know thank my team uh, eric's team kashmir's team for working together in tandem and making this happen uh, the challenges were definitely there but i think we uh, we overcame all of those and we have a beautiful piece of music and video out in the world um, i remember i re- i recorded a bit of my vocals in la when i was um, uh, shooting a video for control Uh, i had met kashmir there and i recorded a few vocals there uh, but the majority of the stuff was done back home in mumbai and eric did his stuff in korea he recorded his vocals in korea yeah. and uh, kashmir put it together in uh, in la uh, what i was uh, something that i was really you know looking forward to and also confused how will it come together because all of us recorded our parts separately so we didn't know which part uh, would end up getting merged together and how would kashmir put it together because yeah. we recorded our vocals and just sent it in and uh, kashmir kind of like took eric's vocals and my vocals and uh, towards the end if you see there's uh, there's these trade off lines where one line eric is singing one line i'm yeah. singing so putting that together piecing that together i think that was uh, for me in my head i was think i was not being able to imagine how it would come together but then yeah. kashmir did his magic and sprinkled his magic dust over the song and it it sounds the way it does right now so i'm really grateful to all the teams all the artists that have come together in such difficult times but yet we've made this possible uh, uh, you know for uh, all our fans uh, so you your and eric's friendship started over twitter and you guys haven't even met yet 
So, uh, you know, when what was like the first conversation like when you decided, okay, now we are going to collaborate on this particular song? How did that go about? So initially, we had a conversation on Twitter where actually Eric tweeted saying, uh, "I just heard a bunch of Arman Malik's songs and he yeah. certified dope." Yes. That was the first tweet that came from his end, and I uh, responded to that. And then we had this conversation on Twitter. Uh, just it, it was just a very cool internet friendship right. that had begun between yeah. me and Eric. Um, and then uh, you know, a mutual friend of ours kind of like um, introed his team with my team. and uh, we got talking our managements got talking and uh, uh, you know we were discussing a potential collaboration because both our fans our fandoms wanted us to collaborate mm-hmm. and uh, we had to make it happen um, and india korea i pop k pop coming together i think it was a big big thing uh, for all of us involved so we were uh, ever since that whole twitter interaction happened we've been discussing possibilities to collaborate together and uh, uh, i had already recorded a few bits of echo with kashmir in la uh and i had the song on me and i shot eric an email and said hey eric this is a song that i really like and i think like we could get you on board for this and like you could be a part of this because i think this is a really beautiful song so i sent it to him and uh he immediately said i'm recording my vocals and sending it in so it was pretty organic pretty uh you know uh how do you say um there was nothing that had to be forced in this collaboration like it was uh, and meant that's to happen it was meant to happen it, it, yeah. it, that's the beauty about these kind of things you know when you force something it usually doesn't end up working out but yeah. um you know when when the artists are really in love with the music and in love with uh you know what they want to do with the song and most importantly each of the artists had immense respect for each other i really love eric's music he really liked my music i'm a huge fan of kashmir uh for the longest time i've wanted to do something with him so i think it just all contributes towards making the song a better piece of music and it's just blessed i feel when the energies are right when everyone's really positive about it and all the right energies combine together it just uh, it's got this divine force and i think fans just get behind it and start loving it immediately so that's what happened to echo and uh eight months of emails back and forth uh had to happen but uh, we made it happen and i'm so glad that we did you know you've always said that uh, your brother amal has had a huge influence on the way your music career has shaped up so what was his reaction like to this collaboration and when you made him listen to the song first oh he's absolutely thrilled because he is a big fan of kashmir and his music and he has always wanted me to do something with him and uh, when he finally saw this song come out he had not heard eric's music a lot before i kind of introduced him to some of eric's songs when uh, eric and i started talking and he was particularly very excited about this collaboration we've all been very silent no one knew this was coming uh, a lot of people uh, a lot of our fans felt like we were going to collab but they didn't know it was going to drop so soon yeah so uh, i i think uh, just like the fans amal also was really surprised because he was doing his own thing you know he was working yeah. on his own music and stuff yeah. so uh, we uh, never really got to tell each other kabhi aa raha hai i was also surprised amal ki abhi aa raha hai <laughs> so he was very excited about this collaboration and um, i think as uh, someone who i consider as my mentor as my musical mentor he was the first one to introduce me to western music and western pop music and and also edm uh so um i i think the way that i perform the way that i sing has a lot to do with my musical influences over the years which has been through amal because i remember him uh long back he, i had this ipod and he had filled the ipod with all these amazing global songs and that was ve- how my love and uh you know interest for pop music and world music began so in a way i think amal has sparked off a lot of this creativity in me and uh, he's definitely uh, been a huge uh, you know musical influence on on me and whatever i do uh, you know so coming to your you know music career you had like an immense journey from being a child singer to then full fledgedly starting your playback singing and then now going on to your individual music so you know and i'm sure a lot more coming ahead what do you have to say about the kind of journey you've had so far wow that's <laughs> an interesting question 
um i was just thinking about this a few days back uh, i've had um such a crazy journey because i started out as a a child voice over artist and then i went on to this reality show sare ga ma pa and uh, you know i got a lot of love on national television and then after that show i started singing for bollywood uh, children's bollywood movies right. like tari zameen par and uh, you know bhutnath and those were my early uh, projects as as a playback singer as a child playback singer to see that um transition from a child voice over artist playback singer to uh, then obviously my voice changing because i grew up and uh, then transitioning into doing my own non film album at the age of 17 then doing jai ho uh, which was my debut uh, you know uh, with salman khan and then after that uh, a slew of like chart buster songs which came my way uh, i thank god for all of that it's it's just brilliant how one thing led to another and it's not been a lot of people think that uh, you know it was only after jai ho that they felt oh yeah this is when he has debuted in the industry but i think this has been a journey i believe this has been a journey of almost uh easily around 13 14 years for me uh and not a lot of people take into account the whole uh you know the first half of my career which was spent as a child singer i i feel that is that is where it all started that's where the the seeds were sown that's where uh the arman malik you see today is uh you know uh a continuous effort from those uh, experiences that i've had so uh, i definitely feel it's it's been such an amazing journey from then till now um and now i've i'm going into a completely different direction i'm i'm doing international singles uh, songs in english pop which has been my lifelong dream and uh, i'm so glad that even though i'm doing that i'm still doing regional music i'm still releasing music in telugu tamil uh canada hindi uh bollywood films ott films so it's it's i'm doing everything i can as a musical artist and i think that's what makes my journey somewhat unique i feel uh i've been able to be a multilingual singer all throughout and that's what always has been my dream i've never wanted to restrict myself or my artistry to just one lane uh even though i'm really passionate about what i'm doing right now and taking this whole international music very very seriously uh i i love that i am still staying true to my roots still doing the things that i'm known for a lot of people know me as arman malik because of all the work that i've done in india so uh it's amazing to do that and do this and do it all together and still do it successfully i think it's it's beautiful i'm blessed and grateful that i get to be on this journey i really feel like my journey uh what i want my journey to be is an inspiration to other young musicians in this country in india uh because if i could do it in all those ages i think anyone else can and i really want young musicians to come up uh not a lot of uh you know indian musicians have been able to do stuff go global try to do uh you know uh international music pop music and i feel i want to open those doors i really want to because i didn't have anyone else to open that for me i hope that i can open it for a lot of people uh, in this country so uh, fingers crossed i hope i have uh, the country support in whatever i'm doing that was actually going to be my next question you know with the project like echo and uh, uh, with someone like priyanka chopra and ar rahman sir and even a band like bts the kind of asian representation that's been there on global stage now is a lot improved from what it was then so what 100%. do you so what do you have to say about the current standing of asian representation on the global stage and what would you like to change to that so i personally feel that uh, over the years like i mean uh, in the last few years i've seen a lot of artists from uh, from south asia especially from the indian subcontinent and obviously uh from asia like bts and korean pop stars and everyone really making a name and making a global uh you know uh, presence felt everywhere and i think it's really encouraging for everyone uh from asia because this is a moment that we've all been waiting for we've all always uh, wanted to do something 
you know, not just restricted to our nation, but also take what we know and what we do and take it global and make it much more massive. And I think uh, now is the perfect time to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that with whatever I am doing, I'm making, uh, it, it might not be 100 steps, but I feel like one step also is making us closer to that dream that all of us have as musicians and as uh, Indian uh, artists. So for me, um, I've always wanted to see uh, someone from my country representing India on a global stage. And uh, Rahman sir has done it in the past. Uh, you know, uh, Priyanka Chopra has been such a prime example of how uh, an Indian can go on and achieve so much in the world. So I really want to do that as a young, uh, you know, pop singer, songwriter. Um, not a lot of singers or pop stars have come out of India. Right. Um, we haven't seen, uh, uh, you know, there's Justin Bieber, there's, uh, there's Lady Gaga, there's uh, Beyonce, everywhere. You know, there's this, every country has their own pop stars. India has never had that one pop star that they can uh, be like, yeah, this is, this is our guy or girl in, in the world and doing us proud. So I really want to be that. And I want that through my journey, I'm, I'm able to inspire other young people who want to do the same thing. So uh, I'm glad that now is the most perfect time for us to do this, make this change uh, because others have already kind of opened up the gateway. Uh, I would definitely uh, give props to Priyanka Chopra, give props to Rehman sir, because they've made our presence felt in that part of the world. Uh, they've made Indians really proud. So I, I feel like they've done the initial part of the work, but a lot of work has to be done by the other artists from India to make that happen. No one's going to give you anything in a platter. We have to make the movement on our own. Uh, I never saw anyone else do it uh, for me. I had to go out there and get my songs out there. I've, I was always waiting when will I be able to do, you know, English pop music or when will I be able to, uh, you know, take India global. And then I realized, wait, why am I waiting for someone to, you know, make this happen for me? I need to go out there and, and just make it happen for myself. And that's what I did. And I think uh, that's the kind of inspiration that I want to give other artists as well, that, you know, you can do it if you really feel and you really put your head to it, you can definitely achieve whatever you desire. And uh, I think what I'm doing right now, uh, these are initial steps, but I do feel that in the bigger picture, India is going to, um, you know, make its mark globally very soon. You know, I wanted to ask you something. So in Bollywood, we've always, uh, you know, we've mostly seen you do uh, romantic songs. So did yeah. you anywhere feel that you were being typecast for a particular kind of genre of songs that you were doing for the Bollywood film industry? Um, so, you know, what happens usually in, in um, you know, in the Bollywood film industry is that when you sing a certain type of song and that becomes a big hit, right. everyone, you know, really wants you to sing more of those. And they call you to sing only more of those kind of songs. Uh, whereas, you know, the singer may have the versatility to kind of do different genres and do different styles. Uh, so it's... I, I personally feel like it's not it's not a thing that the industry is probably doing. It's more of the fact that, you know, if, if it's it's all from the fact that if a song gets popular, you really want to ride on that wave and and do more with uh you know with that artist in that space. I think it's upon the artist to make that uh make that change happen for themselves because see, I am known for romantic Bollywood songs. And I'm really happy singing those songs because I feel like that's something that I'm known for. Um, I am Arman Malik because my fans love me for that. So I don't want to lose that identity or don't want to lose that special uh, place I've made through my romantic songs. But what I can do is put out songs like Control, put out songs like Echo on the side, uh, do songs otherwise that, that I would never be able to do in a Bollywood film. So my fans and listeners in general can see, wait, he can do this as well. And this is what we never knew that Arman was capable of doing. So I feel somewhere there's the responsibility of the artist to take, take it upon themselves to show their uh, versatility and uh, not feel like, oh, they are being typecasted or they are, uh, you know, called for the same type of songs. Yes, you will be called for those songs because you are famous for doing those songs. Uh, like example, uh, you know, Sonu Nigam used to be really famous for romantic songs. Mika Singh is uh, really famous for dance dance numbers. 
um, Hani Singh, Bacha, these guys are known for their rap numbers. It's not that they've been typecasted. That's what they 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 are famous for. That's what that's the kind of songs of theirs that do really well. Now it's upon those artists that they do stuff that they really want to show their versatility through on the side. I think the artists need to take that upon themselves and do uh, uh, do that on the side. So I'm glad that I've been able to in the last two years put out songs like Control, Next to Me, How Many, and now Echo, so that listeners can look at me and see me in a very different way than. uh they have you know seen me before so uh, yeah that's my answer to your question so you've been a part of music reality shows as a contestant and even as a judge so would you say over the years the the kind of uh, you know the way the show has to, you know shifted more towards the drama angle of it more than you know showing the talent of a particular contestant see i've been part of a reality show long back even when i was a kid um back then obviously there was a very different atmosphere uh my only hope and wish is that the show should be more about music and less about the other things that's all as a singer as a musician i feel like that's what the focus should be so i hope going forward uh, all the shows that uh, we do in our country that we focus a lot more on the music obviously there are certain elements in a show that are part of which uh, do entertain people and audiences sitting at home but the core of the show the core of a singing reality show should be music and i feel like music should be the focus and the focal point of every show so you know i've always seen you do these uh friday with arman sessions with your fans and which have some yeah. really hilarious responses and you often engage yeah. with your fans as well uh but then you know although social media is a you know very great place it also comes with its fair share of trolling so how do you on a personal level deal with the kind of social media trolls and does it affect you personally ever um see I, I, to be honest over the last few years i have uh, i really haven't cared about what trolling is happening online because i'll tell you what it it really it can affect someone you know even though it is an unknown person behind a screen just writing rubbish but it can really affect you can affect your mental health so i follow this uh, very simple system called scroll the troll as soon as i see something that's negative i just scroll down that's what i follow uh, if you spend too much time you might want to respond you might say something wrong you don't want to get into that zone so i feel like the best way to stay away from negativity is to okay you saw it once scroll down so scroll the troll is what i follow that's my mantra That's really cool, actually. Coming back to your Twitter, we've always also seen you, uh, you know, expressing your love for K-pop music in general. And in fact, yeah. last year you even sang EXO Chen's uh, "Beautiful Goodbye," a small cover of it. So, what kind of, yeah. uh, you know, which bands do you usually follow, and what do you have to say about the kind of spread that even K-pop music has had, you know, on a global stage right now? I think it's beautiful what the K-pop industry has done uh, for uh, Asians and Asian artists. Uh, they have kind of, you know, uh, made their presence felt in such a huge way. Uh, you know, through bands like EXO, through bands like BTS, and uh, some solo artists as well. Uh, you know, example Eric Nam. So uh, I think all these different artists and groups have. done some commendable work over the past few years their teams have done some really amazing work in making sure that whatever songs they put out really does well globally so i think it's it's beautiful the whole movement is beautiful what what's happening uh it also uh, inspires a lot of other asian countries other asian artists uh including myself and india to kind of do something for our country and for our nation and our music as well uh i've been a fan of uh, exo for a long time now uh i really love uh, chen and his voice i think his vocals are amazing um and uh, yeah i've done a small little cover on my uh, instagram yeah. and i've sung it in korean a lot of fans were like wow we didn't expect this <laughs> so uh, i i think i just have love for music which is uh which can be in any language it doesn't need to be in hindi or english um uh, for me to enjoy it so i think that's the beauty about music and i have loved uh you know kpop and the music that's coming out since the last few years what i particularly love about kpop is i i don't know if this is highlighted much but i love the ballads and the soft songs that yeah. they have you know uh, there are definitely 
a lot of uh, you know the peppy numbers and there's obviously a lot of those dance routine music videos which do really well but what i love being obviously i'm i'm also a romantic singer from bollywood so i have this uh, you know a special place in my heart for you know for these ballads and soft numbers that they do so which is why i did a cover of beautiful goodbye because it's such a soft song such a melodious right. song it really uh, touched my heart so uh, i don't know if a lot of people talk about those ballads but i feel like they should be more popular than they are also so do you ever want to like apart from eric of course do you ever want to like are there any k-pop artists or korean artists on your wish list that you would want to collaborate with and maybe if you see you singing in korean as well i would love to um i think uh, Chen is one of my favorite artists. Chen and Kai, I think both of them are amazing. Uh, obviously, Chen, I think, is inactive right now. He's he's uh, yeah. serving in the army, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, whenever he's out, tell Chen Arman is ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'd love to collaborate with him. I think he's got a very beautiful voice. He sings amazing uh, live. As I've seen a few clips online, I think he's beautiful. I really uh, appreciate. uh you know someone who can sing that beautifully live as well i think that's something that really shows uh the musicality and artistry of an artist uh so yeah definitely chen and kai are some uh, some of the artists that i would love to collaborate with and um obviously uh, everyone's favorite and my favorite as well bts i think they're cool uh, i love their sound and love what they've been doing in the past few years so yeah these are some of the artists there are some really cool solo artists also coming up um, i haven't really uh, you know gone deep into their music yet but uh, you know for me it uh, connecting with the artist is very important and connecting with their music is very important and that's how you know me and eric collaborated because we really had this mutual love for each other's music uh, and each other's uh, artistry and and that's when the fun of collaboration really happens so uh, it it could be any artist actually in the world i just feel like if we connect i would love to do a song with them it's as simple as that thank you so much for talking to us and giving us your time all the very best for the upcoming project thank you thank you so much great talking thank to you, you.